The 1996 cruise missile strikes on Iraq occurred in September 1996 during the Kurdish Civil War. It involved a joint United States Navy-United States Air Force strike against air defense targets in southern Iraq. Iraqi Offensive. On 31 August 1996, the Iraqi military launched its biggest offensive since 1991 against the city of Erbil in Iraqi Kurdistan. This attack stoked American fears that the Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein intended to launch a genocidal campaign against the Kurds similar to the campaigns of 1988 and 1991. It also placed Saddam in clear violation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 688 forbidding repression of Iraq's ethnic minorities. Cruise missile strike. The cruise missile strike was preliminarily planned to be by aircraft launched from the aircraft carrier US Carl Vinson, including aircraft from Fighter Squadron 11 and Fighter Squadron 31, both operating F 14D Tomcats, Electronic Attack Squadron 139, operating EA 6B Prowlers, Attack Squadron 196, operating A 6E intruders equipped with the target recognition and attack multi-sensor system, anti-submarine squadron 35 flying S-3B Vikings and Strike Fighter Squadron 113 and Strike Fighter Squadron 25 both operating F-A-18 Hornets. However, the strike instead was launched by U.S. Navy surface warships and U. S. Air Force bombers. On 3 September 1996, a joint operation by the U.S. Navy's Carl Vinson Carrier Battle Group and U.S. Air Force, a combined strike team consisting of the guided missile cruiser US Shiloh, the guided missile destroyer US Laboon, and B-52 Strata Fortress bombers escorted by F-14D Tomcat fighters from Carl Vinson, with the nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser US California serving as air warfare commander, launched 27 cruise missiles against Iraqi air defense targets in southern Iraq. A second wave of 17 missiles was launched later that day from the destroyers US Russell, US Hewitt, US Laboon, and the nuclear-powered attack submarine US Jefferson City. The missiles hit targets in and around Kut, Iskandariya, Nasiriya, and Talil. Aftermath, the attacks were primarily aimed at retaliation for the targeting of USAF fighters in the northern and southern no-fly zones, and were targeted at surface-to-air missile sites in command, control, and communication locations, with the intention of degrading the Iraqi air defense infrastructure. These strikes, along with follow-on deployments of troops, aircraft, and the addition of a second aircraft carrier to the region, achieved their desired results. It is debatable whether the attacks did or did not have a substantial effect on Iraq's northern campaign. Once they installed the Kurdistan Democratic Party in control of Erbil, Iraqi troops withdrew from the Kurdish region back to their initial positions. The KDP drove the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan from its other strongholds, and with additional Iraqi help captured Suleymaniye, the Pukhanit's leader, Jalal Talabani, retreated to the Iranian border, and American forces evacuated 700 Iraqi National Congress personnel and 6,000 pro-Western Kurds out of northern Iraq. In response to Iraq's moves, the United States and United Kingdom also expanded Operation Southern Watch and the southern Iraqi no-fly zones from the 32nd parallel to the 33rd parallel, bringing it to the edges of Baghdad itself.